Hey everyone, welcome into this lecture on antiderivatives of rational functions. For the most part, we are going to use partial fraction decomposition method in this uh, lecture, these ex in these examples that I'm about to do. Before I start on the examples, I would like to remind you that when you watch this video, it's not really useful to you unless you're working along with me. So please frequently pause the video whenever you need to, to uh, either justify something that I've claimed or maybe try to work ahead and see if we get to the same place. But please pause the video frequently, um, work along with it, don't just watch it. Okay, so here's our first example. This example is the antiderivative of 10 over x minus 1 times x squared plus 9 dx. And like I said, I'm going to go pretty quick through these examples because you can pause them and, and justify anything that I've done. Take a few minutes to justify those things uh, as I work along. So the first step here is I want to do the partial fraction decomposition of this integrand. So x minus 1, x squared plus 9. This is already factored. x squared plus 9 is irreducible. So this will end up being a over x minus 1 plus bx plus c over x squared plus 9. And then when we multiply through and add these back together, we end up with the following uh, equation here, that 10 should equal a times x squared plus 9 plus bx plus c times x minus 1. And this is how we're going to solve for our a, b, and our c. Um, we can choose a convenient value of x to find the a. So if we let x equal 1, then this equation says that 10 should equal uh, 1 plus 9, so 10a, and so our a is equal to 1. All right, and then to find the other values, once we know a, we can just choose other values if we want. So we can choose like x equals 0. So then this is 10 equals uh, 9 times a, but a is 1, right? 9 times a uh, plus b will be 0, this will be 0, so this will be just minus c, right? c times minus 1. And then this tells us what? That c should equal negative 1. So c has to be negative 1. 9 plus 1 is 10. All right, once we know both of those, we can choose anything else to find b. Let's choose um, yeah, negative 1. Why not? So this then says that 10 is equal to, this is uh, 10a, so there's 10, uh, plus if b is negative 1, this is going to be negative 1, uh, sorry, negative b, negative 1b, minus 1 times negative 2. These cancel, right? And so what we have now is that negative b minus 1 times negative 2 has to equal 0. Well, that's only going to work if b is equal to negative 1. Right? And so b is negative 1 as well. And so after all that, we've got our partial fraction decomposition. Our integrand becomes, so this 10 over x minus 1 times x squared plus 9. This is equal to, what, 1 over x minus 1. And then we can factor out the minus from each of these. So uh, the minus x plus 1 over x squared plus 9. And so this is what we're going to integrate. So our integral becomes, again, we're integrating. We can, here, here's one way to do it. Just integrate both sides, right? Integrate with respect to dx. And then we can break this up and treat this uh, like 2. So we get uh, integral of 1 over x minus 1 dx minus the integral of x plus 1 over x squared plus 9 dx. All right, and actually we can break this one up even further. We're going to want to anyway because the, we're going to do a u sub for part of it and then a stare at it for part of it. <clears throat> okay. So let's see what we get here. This one is going to be natural log of x minus 1 minus, this will be the integral of x over x squared plus 9 dx minus the integral of 1 over x squared plus 9 dx. This one is almost a u sub. What do we need? We need a 2 here to get our du, and that means we need a 1 half out here. So this will be a log, right? That'll be a log. And then this one is an arctan, but maybe what we want to do here to make sure we understand how the arctan works is divide, get this 9 out of here, right? So if we take the 1 ninth out, we really want to take 1 third out and leave 1 third for the dx, right? So we take 1 third out, leave 1 third up here for the dx, 
that's going to make this a 1, but it's going to make this an x over 3 in x quantity squared. And if you haven't done this in a while, uh, please work through that, because this will then be 1 third of arctan x over 3. All right, so at the end of the day, what do we get for this one? This one becomes the log of x minus 1 minus 1 half natural log of x squared plus 9 minus 1 third arctangent of x over 3 and then always plus c. So let's remember what, what we just integrated though. We should write that over here, right? So this is 10 over x minus 1 times x squared plus 9 dx. All right, so there's our first example worked out. Second example that I'd like to do is a definite integral. So this is the integral from 1 to 2 of x cubed plus 4x squared plus x minus 1 all over x cubed plus x squared dx. Now the first thing that we need to do is notice that the degree of the top and the bottom are the same. So the first thing we have to do is perform some division. Um, so I'm going to do long division here. So remember for long division you put the divisor on the outside and this here goes on the inside. So x cubed plus 4x squared plus x minus 1. So yes, this divided by this. And so then we just ask, um, what do we need to multiply by this to get this? And obviously the answer is 1, right? So way over here, we have a 1 x cubed plus x squared, and now we subtract. And this is going to give us a remainder, right? So this will give us 3x squared plus x minus 1. And what we end up with is that our fraction, our integrand, so I'll just write this out, right? Our integrand becomes 1 plus this new fraction, right? So plus 3x squared plus x minus 1 all over uh, x cubed plus x squared. And this is all dx. At this point, we can break this up by linearity. So this is the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 dx plus the integral from 1 to 2 of this whole thing. And this one we can use partial fraction decomposition on. So the denominator of this factor is to be x squared times x plus 1, right? So what we then know, I'll write over here, pfd, is that we can write our fraction 3x squared plus x minus 1 over x cubed plus x squared. This can be written as a over x plus b over x squared plus c over x plus 1. Right? And then when we, when we add these up and multiply through uh, to get the common denominators, this one needs an x times an x plus 1, so that's what goes on top. This needs an x plus 1, so that's what goes on top. And this one needs x squared, so that's what goes up here. And we end up with this equation. So 3x squared plus x minus 1 is equal to a times x times x plus 1 plus b times x plus 1 plus c times x squared. And we can use the convenient value of x method here to figure this out. So let's choose x equal to 0. On the left-hand side, we get a negative 1. On the right-hand side, that's gone, that's gone. We're just left with b. All right? So b is equal to negative 1 just by choosing x equals 0. If we choose x equal to negative 1, we can choose 1 for our other non -con not so convenient, but our other value. When x is negative 1, again, uh, this time we have, what, 3 minus 1 minus 1. So that's just going to be positive 1, right? 3 minus 1 minus 1 equals, on this side, that's 0, that's 0, that's going to be c. So c is 1. All right, and then we can choose our x equal 1 to figure out everything else out, and we'll to figure out a, basically, right? When x is 1, we have 3 plus 1 minus 1, so that's 3. Here we have uh, x times 2, or sorry, a times 1 times 2, so 2a. And then here we need to plug in, right? So b is negative 1. We said x is 1, so this will be minus 2. And then c is 1, x is 1, so this is plus 1. And then we just rearrange, right? So this is going to tell us that 2a is equal to 4, and so a must be equal to 2. All right, so after all that, that's going to allow us to break up this into um, a, this sum, right? So what we end up with now is that our integral 
is equal to the integral from 1 to 2, just 1 dx, so that's, that's 1, right, that's easy, uh, plus the integral from 1 to 2 of this sum here. So this is going to be 2 over x uh, minus 1 over x squared plus 1 over x plus 1. And each of these are very easy to integrate, right? So here we have, uh, we can just go through here. This is going to be x. This is going to be plus 2 times the natural log of x. This is going to be plus 1 over x and then plus natural log of x plus 1. And then we need to plug in these boundary points, right? Because this is a definite integral. So uh, when we plug in, we get 2 minus 1 plus 2 times log of 2 minus log of 1 plus 1 half minus 1 plus log of 3 minus log of 2. All right, so let's see how this all works out. This is going to be 1 plus 2 log of 2. This log of 1 is 0, right? Minus a half, and then plus log of 3 minus log of 2. These two can be combined. 2 log 2 minus log 2, and these can be combined. So this is now 1 half plus log of 2 plus log of 3. Log of 2 plus log of 3 is log of 6, so this is then 1 half plus natural log 6. And we can't do any better than that. So we will leave that one like that. All right, on to the next one. Example 3. For this one, I'd like to compute the integral of the natural log of x squared minus x plus 2 dx. Now, remember the natural log uh, needs to be, whenever there's a log, it needs to be computed by integration by parts, okay? So we're going to choose this to be our dv. Let me try to color code this the way that we did in the integration by parts lecture, but this would be our u, and this would be our dv, okay? And so in this case, our u is natural log of x squared minus x plus 2. That means our du is u prime over u, so that's 2x minus 1 over x squared minus x plus 2. If dv is dx, then v is x, right? And what we end up with then is that by performing integration by parts, we see that the antiderivative of this is x times natural log of x squared minus x plus 2 minus the integral of x times it. By the way, this has a dx, right? So that's dx, minus the integral, uh, going this way, right? So this is going to be minus the integral of 2x squared minus x over x squared minus x plus 2 dx. Now, x squared minus x plus 2 is irreducible. That cannot be factored, um, right, because the only way to make 2 is either uh, 2 times 1 or negative 2 times negative 1. Neither of those add up to negative x or negative 1, I should say. So for this one, we need to do the long division, and then we'll uh, rearrange and maybe have to complete a square or something on this one. But this part's just going to stay here, so I'll leave that. We'll, we'll come back to this, right? Um, but for this, we need to do the long division. So we have 2x squared minus x divided by x squared minus x plus 2. I'm going to add a plus 0 in here. We obviously need to multiply by 2, right? So that'll give us 2x squared minus 2x uh, plus 4, and then subtract. Those are gone. This is addition, so this becomes x, and this becomes minus 4. And so our integral, uh, by the way, for this one, I've got, there's the minus sign. Let's not forget that. I'm going to leave it off, so remind me to put it back. All right, so this one becomes integral 2x squared minus x over x squared minus x plus 2 dx. This is, becomes the integral of 2 plus x minus 4 over x squared minus x plus 2 dx. All right. Obviously, the integral of 2 dx is no problem. This one, um, what do we need? So this is going to become integral of x minus 4 over, this is the one that's going to require the work, 
It's actually a decent amount of work because what we need to do is the derivative of this is 2x minus 1, right? So we're going to need a 2 up here. We have to divide through by a half whenever we multiply by 2. And then that leaves us with 2x minus 8. We only want 2x minus 1, right? So we need to rewrite this. So this whole term becomes plus 1 half integral 2x minus 1 over x squared minus x plus 2. But then it's supposed to be minus 8, so there's another minus 7, right? And I'm going to move that minus 7 over here. Minus 7 halves integral 1 over x squared minus x plus 2 dx. This one, we've made it so that that's a, that's a natural log. That's the log of x squared minus x plus 2. It's a half, obviously, right? This one, we need to complete the square. Complete the square. So let's look at it. x squared minus x plus 2. This, when you complete the square, it becomes x squared minus x plus a quarter plus 2 minus a quarter. So this is x minus a half squared plus this one. I th this one's going to be uh, 3 fourths. And so when we write this out in the terms of our trig subs or whatever, this becomes x plus a half quantity squared uh, plus root 3 over 2 quantity squared. And then this is going to be, a, it's a plus, so this is going to be an arctan. We can do this by stare at it method, right? We can factor this out, and we can write this as if we took out root 3 over 2 quantity squared, what would be left here is uh, the reciprocal comes out of here, right? So that's going to be leave us with 2x minus 1 over root 3 quantity squared plus 1. So the integral becomes, and by the, way, by the way, when this comes out, this is in the denominator, so we could flip it, right? So um, it comes out as four, th four thirds, right? It comes, it's one over three fourths. So it comes out as four thirds. So our integral now becomes, I'm gonna write it out, negative seven halves, integral, one over x squared minus x plus two dx. This is gonna become, uh, 4 thirds comes out, we said, right? So this becomes minus 7 halves times 4 thirds integral of 1 over, I didn't want to take all that out actually, so here's, here's what I want to do. We'll see why in a, in a second. But then this is 2x minus 1 over root 3 squared plus 1 dx. If you're going to do a u sub, then this has to be u, right? And if that's u, then du has to be 2 over root 3 dx, and that has to come from here. All right, so actually what we do is we take 2 over root 3 from there, inside, and that only leaves us with 2 over root 3 here, right? And then those cancel. So now we're good to go. So that means that the antiderivative of this, uh, the 2's cancel, so this is negative 7 over root 3. Um, of arctan 2x minus 1 over root 3. All right, now we just have to put this all back together. So that negative sign came with that one. Uh, we've got this log, which is a plus. So, and then don't forget about this. This gives us a 2x. So let's put this all back together now. Um, this whole thing right here, just based on all this work, is 2x plus 1 half natural log x squared minus x plus 2 minus 7 over root 3 arctan of 2x minus 1 over root 3. And then obviously plus c, but if we go way back up here, that's got to get subtracted, right? That's got to get subtracted. And so our final answer to our integral is that the integral, antiderivative of the log of x squared minus x plus 2 dx by the way, seemingly simple looking integrand, right? Not, not too crazy looking integrand. It's going to be equal to x times the log, which that's not surprising at all, x squared minus x plus 2, minus all these terms, right? So now we need to subtract each of these. So it's minus 2x minus 1 half of the log of x squared minus x plus 2. So you get the same log, right? This one doesn't have an x, though, so there's no way to combine those unless you're going to factor something. 
And then this is going to become plus 7 over root 3 arctangent of 2x minus 1 over root 3. And then finally, plus c. So there's the antiderivative of the natural log of x squared minus x plus 2. All right, I have three more, so a whole lot of examples here. This next one is the integral of dx over x times square root x minus 1. This one is not in the form of a rational function that we would like yet, so I'm going to start by making a u sub, and I'm going to call this entire term u. So if u is equal to square root of x minus 1, then what does that mean? Well, then u squared is equal to x minus 1, and... Um, this means that x is equal to u squared plus 1. All right. We also, from here, can compute that dx has to be equal to 2u du. And so we can make all these substitutions, right? That's our u that we chose. We need this to go in for x, and we need this to go in for dx. All right. So this integral becomes the integral of 2u du over uh, u squared plus 1 times u. All right, and it's an integral, so of course this cancels. And this one's actually not, not too bad. We don't have to do, it's not as crazy as the last couple that we've had to do. Because at this point, this is an arctan, right? So this is, this is pretty straightforward that this is 2 times the arctangent of u plus c but then just remember what u is, right? So this one is very straightforward once you make a uh, proper substitution here. And so this is kind of like a, what the book calls an inverse substitution like we did with the trig subs, right? We actually let this entire root be our u, and then we very carefully work out what everything else has to be. Um, yeah, so at this point, we just have to write down the proper answer, right? So this is 2 times the arctangent of the square root of x minus 1 plus c. So there's the antiderivative of that one. All right, a couple more. Number five, this is the integral of or antiderivative sine of x over cosine squared x minus 3 cosine of x dx. So let's see what happens with this. So this is another one where it's not quite a rational function yet. We need to make a use of for this one. For this one, it seems like because cosine's happening kind of many places, that we should make our u equal to cosine of x. And of course, at, the, at that point, we do not get to choose our differential. So du has to then be minus sine of x dx. So that means we need a minus sign inside. And to balance it, a minus sign outside. And our integral will become negative integral of du over, this becomes u squared minus 3u. All right, and so this is then minus the integral of 1 over u times u minus 3 du, and we can do partial fraction decomposition on this. Okay, so let's see what it will be. Uh, 1 over u times u minus 3 has to end up being a over u, plus b over u minus 3. And this tells us then that 1 has to equal a times u minus 3 plus b times u, and we choose our convenient values for u. When u is 0, we have 1 equals minus 3a. So a has to be negative 1 third. When u equals 3, then 1 is equal to 3b. And so b is equal to positive 1 third. All right, and our integrand up here becomes, we can just change the signs on these to, to absorb this minus sign here, right? And so this will become one-third integral, one-third, one over u, uh, minus, because I'm changing the signs, right? Minus one-third, one over u minus three, du. And these are both logs, very straightforward, okay? So this was all in between. This comes over here, and so now what we end up with is that this antiderivative is one-third log of u minus one-third log of u minus three plus c, right? And then we just need to plug back in what u is, right? Just plug back in what u is. So our final answer, 
by the way, we could write this. You can use a log rule if you want. Because these are both one-thirds, this could be one-third natural log of u over u minus 3 plus c. And so our answer is then, this is one-third natural log of cosine of, was it t? Cosine of x. Cosine of x over cosine of x minus 3 plus c. So that's the integral of sine of x over cosine squared x minus 3 cosine of x dx. Beautiful. All right, I've got one more for us. This one is the integral of 1 over x cubed plus 1 dx. So uh, the first deal is we have to remember how to factor a sum of cubes. So I hope you remember that x cubed plus 1 cubed factors to be x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. And so you can work this out, multiply this out, and make sure that you end up with x cubed plus 1. Um, but what that means then is that our fraction by partial fraction decomposition is equal to a over x plus 1 plus this is irreducible quadratic, right? So this is bx plus c over x squared minus x plus 1. And then we need to solve for these. So our equation becomes 1 equals a times x squared minus x plus 1 plus bx plus c times x plus 1. And I'll do this one by the method where you group together the, the powers of, of x. So this one's going to be I'll just multiply it out first. ax squared minus ax plus a plus bx squared plus bx plus cx plus c. And so in other words, 1 is equal to a plus b x squared uh, plus, this is going to be b plus c minus a times x and then plus a plus c. And this leads us to the system of equations, right? This is 0x squared plus 0x plus 1. So this tells us that 0 has to equal a plus b. And 0 has to equal a, b plus c minus a. And then finally, 1 has to equal a plus c. All right, and we can solve this now by solving for um, b and c in terms of a, plugging into here and finding out what everything equals. This one says that b is equal to minus a, and this one says that c is equal to 1 minus a. So when they go into here, what do we get? We get 0 equals minus a plus 1 minus a uh, minus a. Right? And so when we group all these together, we get 0 is equal to 1 minus 3a. So a has to be equal to 1 third. If a is equal to 1 third, we can find the other two very, very easily, right? So b is also equal to, uh, it's equal to negative 1 third, and c is equal to 2 thirds. All right, so this tells us then that our integral that we actually want to compute is the integral of 1 third, 1 over x plus 1, plus 1 third can come out, right? 1 third of negative x plus 2 over x squared minus x plus 1 dx. So that's just very carefully plugging these back in um, and factoring out these one-thirds. And so now I'm going to come down here to compute my integral. So remember we're computing 1 over x cubed plus 1 dx by, take out the one-third, integral of 1 over 1 plus x dx. Um, the way I've got it here, I'm now also going to do something else. I'm going to take this minus out, but that means that this has to become a minus, right? So let's write this then as minus one-third integral of x minus 2 over x squared minus x plus 1 dx. All right, this one's a log. So 1 third natural log x plus 1. No problem there. This one, we need to adjust, right? So what do we need? We need a, if we're going to do a u sub, we need this to be a 2x. But if we do that, we need to divide by 2 as well. 
So that becomes a one sixth, right? So I'll fix that down here. So this is one sixth. This is now two X. Uh, we need a minus one, but there's gonna be another minus three that we have to deal with. That's because this, when you multiply it out, is two X minus four, right? So here we have X squared minus X plus one dx. The 2x minus 1 is going to be the du, and then we have to chop this thing up, right? So cut that thing right there, and then deal with what's going to end up being some kind of an arc trig function there. So let's get this all written out then. This is log of x plus 1 third log of x plus 1 minus 1 6 integral. This is going to be the log of x squared minus x plus 1, and then this becomes plus a half because this minus 3 comes out, uh, integral 1 over x squared minus x plus 1 dx. We've done something very similar to this up above, so I'm going to go very quickly here, but this one's got to be, you got to complete the square, right? So x squared minus x plus a quarter plus 1 minus a quarter. We've done this, right? This becomes x minus a half quantity squared plus, this one's 3 quarters, Okay, so uh, this then becomes, same deal, right? Um, root 3 over 2 squared comes out. This leaves us with 2x minus 1 over root 3 squared plus 1. So there's our, our arctan that we're used to. One of these comes out for the du, the other one stays in, and we end up with 1 third natural log x plus 1 minus 1 sixth natural log x squared minus x plus 1 uh, plus this is going to end up being plus 1 over root 3 arc tangent of 2x minus 1 over root 3 plus c. So this is the integral of 1 over x cubed plus 1 dx. Alright, so as I said at the very beginning of this video, um, if you uh, if that's not clear, you should work it out. Work out all the details. Make sure that that you have got it and that it makes sense. All right, that's that's more than enough examples. So uh, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.